Hi, this is B from Sorcery Soap, and today I'm going to show you about the stencils that I've made such a big fuss about. So, lots of work has gone into this so far, <laughs> but, um, and I don't know why I didn't think about this before. Maybe it just wasn't the right time, but, you know, I've been stenciling on soap since, geez, since like 2016 or something. I put it in my first book, but... It never occurred to me to make them myself because that's one of the reasons why I didn't do stencils very much is because um, I didn't find the shapes that I liked at all. So I just went to one of the craft stores yesterday and I was looking at them and talking to my guy about them and whatnot. And it's like the reason that I thought I could do better is because of the shape of the stencil itself and the silhouette. The silhouettes were just you know they're just sort of generic things and even the ones that are unique and interesting are usually for walls or much bigger they're not scaled to a bar of soap so I'll put in some um, previously this week stenciled soaps so that you can see what I'm talking about um, these are the stencils that I've designed but these are still some prototypes they are not the actual packaged ones the ones that are going out for testing will be on the thinner one, the thinner, because it's easier and I can print them faster, I can cut them faster. They're not printed, they're cut. But I can cut these faster. These take a lot more time, and although they're a little bit more durable, um, if I, if, I don't know, we're working it out, but I'm looking at some companies to try and do lots of designs. It doesn't do me any good to go to a big company and ask them to do 100 of one chicken, and then that's all I have. So I'm working that out, but in the meantime, I wanna offer them to you because they're so hard to get and they're my unique designs. I've worked on these, I've created vectors, I've made all these images, these silhouettes, so that um, I can put them into my program and then I can therefore cut them. And I've also worked out some of the things too, let me show you. So there's things that have to happen. So if you, you have to have, they're called bridges, but if you put them in there, the whole inside like this, this inside will just fall out where I created this part so that the inside stays and then you have a little image of that. Anyway, so there's a lot of thought that has to go into this. And then of course the packaging, spelling apparently is beyond me some days, but anyway. So let's do some of these. I'll show you how this works because I, I know you have lots of questions about this. So here's a monkey one, that's pretty cool. So I'm running out of, believe it or not, so these are all the ones I have. I have horse, I have a unicorn, which is cool. The bees, big big pain in my hind end. Um, donkey, bats, I love the bats. There's a cow. See, the cow had to be scaled a bit, right? Okay, so let's see, let's do one. Let's do the chicken. Everybody said, I'll do the chicken. Everybody said in the group, they said they wanted the chicken or the raven. So here I have two. These are, there's the raven and there's the chicken. And this raven actually is a graphic that's in my book that I worked on and created and mucked around with and whatever. Anyway, okay, so I don't have very many plain soaps, so we're going to do practice on some soaps here if I have one okay so this is a soap bar that went sideways that I kept from my house and I put this on the other side see this is stenciled but I don't think this is like the thought of it was really coming through and you can see I don't know what I did but I think I got it I don't know I just got orange spots, shredded orange spots in there. But anyway, don't worry. This isn't going out of my house. This is for me only. I don't mind that, honestly. But, okay, so here's how this works. You just lay it on top or you orient it. See, and that's the other thoughtful thing that I'm putting into this because it really is consideration. So this is my size bar, which is three by two and a half, maybe two. So the interior can't be bigger than two, so three and a half wide, right? But most people's bars or lots of people's bars are that big, which is cool because then you have a bigger a bigger um, uh, platform to work on. Um, anyway, this one might be harder to see if I do this. Let's see. Yeah, the white one looks better. Okay, so let's put the raven on there. That fits a little bit better, and we'll put the chicken on that one. 
Okay. So here's the other thing that I thought was really important. So I put this, I put soap dough in my extruder for a very good reason. Because as I'm doing these, I want to go through them quickly. And this was another thing that I really wanted to do is make unique soaps quickly and not sit and make um, tops as long just to have a series, not to do all of them that way because I still like to do soap dough embellishments, but just to have some that I can do quicker and then aren't going to take me weeks to get through. So if you're going to do that, then you want to put your soap dough in an extruder so you don't have to wrap it, unwrap it. That's the only reason I do that. Okay. So the other thing is, is that when you have a stencil, you want to be able to touch it on the outside here to hold it while you're putting this on, right? Now there are cookie genies, right? And they're in a magnet sort of thing. And I thought, well, but they're not geared towards a bar of soap. So I didn't even bother with that. So this one's a little bit wonky because there's a piece of soap on the back. But anyway, and you just tack it down. Right, so you want to tack the corners down, essentially, so that it doesn't move when you touch when you leave off. Right, there's no water, there's nothing. This is just soap dough. Okay, so now I have a little palette knife that I prefer, just because I want it smooth. And see, here's a little trick. If you get little, you know, sharp little details, you want to make sure it's separated. It doesn't have to be completely smeared off. Just that it comes off, it comes away nicely. Now, to make it nice and smooth, just my fingers just a little bit wet, right? Okay, here we go. There you go, done. So that's what makes me so pleased about these is because I can just whip through a bunch of them and they're cool and unique and interesting to look at it. And it's soap and it's going to stay. You just have to not touch it and leave it there. And um, that's it. And the colors, there's so many colors. So, so this, here, let me show you. This I did two weeks ago or whatever. And this was a... Um, uh, these are store-bought ones. I didn't create these. I just bought them at the store and put them on. But I just did these, and they're done. I mean, these are fully cured bars. These have been sitting on my shelf for, like, over a year. I don't know what I, how, where, anything. I was just keeping these for practice, exactly for what I'm doing right now. I, I knew I was going to use them. I just didn't know what to use them for. Anyway, so this is two different colors of soap dough. This here, too. Um, anyway. So, and then I have some pictures, I'll put it in the video, that um, of gradations. So, so here is a chicken, and maybe, let's see here, I put everything black. So this is how I do it. Because I just want a little bit, and I want to tack it down. It won't be as, it won't be as sharp, for sure. It's okay, just as an show to she give you an example. Now, the stencils aren't very thick. Some people have been asking me about the thickness of the stencil. It's not necessary to have them super thick. I mean, obviously, you could make a you know, cut a soap, roll it out, right, and cut it out of um, to make a soap cookie, and then just tack it on with water to the front of your soap. That's easy enough. And then you have, you know, I have a lot of soap cookies, or I mean, uh, stencil, cookie cutters, and then you have to store them and all this other stuff. Stencils are fun, more fun in that capacity because you don't have to store a big deal thing. To me, I think they're affordable. Of course, I have paid ridiculous amounts of money for stencils that I'm like, why did I do that? Because it wasn't a very good stencil in the first place, but they're made on uh, vinyl. 
and I don't really like those. I like them firm. So here we go, chicken. There, there's a little chicken. So this one is made and I've separated the feet a bit more so that, see some of that stuff has to be thought out because I don't, I could just see where that's going if it doesn't get addressed right away. That makes sense, right? So let me show you this. So you see where the feet are right here. I had to move this leg over a bit without making the whole stencil look wonky because this needs to have more separation right here. So there's lots of little things that had to be sorted essentially. Here, let me show you this too. Okay, this is probably a really interesting thing. I'm gonna just take this chicken right off. But I am gonna fill this little, there's a little pocket here. Fill that in, okay. There. Now this is just a little bit moist, right? Now these are, I'm doing this quickly and I, I know lots of people have been asking for it, which is cool, but um, these are all my practice soaps, by the way. <laughs> okay, so let's put this on. Now I'm not gonna take this orange off of here. I'm just gonna put this right on top of here because I wanna see what happens. Yes, I'm that person. It'll probably just smear and mix in with the orange. So if it doesn't come off, like, there. Yeah, that's cool. I'm okay with that. Get the feet on there. So see, I don't know if you could see that. You just want it smooth, right? And a little bit thicker. See, and it doesn't, you don't need a ton on here. It, because if, see, that's the whole, that's not the point of a stencil. If you want something to last, then you put a column of soap in there and there's extruders and extruder discs and, you know, there's all that in there. And this is supposed to be a quick and easy way to make a unique soap. Nice. I'm happy with that. It's a quick and easy way to make a unique soap sort of, um, my guy recently used this term force multiplier, which means to do more with what you're doing right now. I guess that's kind of what I, I think it means is to do more, to multiply already what you're doing. And, oh, he said no. What does it mean? Oh, okay. To he's I don't know if you heard that. He said to work as to multiply yourself, force multiplier. That makes more sense. To multiply yourself so you work as 10. So that makes more sense. So yeah, still that I could make a lot more soaps doing a lot more unique looking soaps doing this and have fun doing it. So yes, this is a cool bar of soap, but how much cooler is it with the chicken? Right, and then that's the other thing. Like for me, it, you know, I have tons of designs. I've been doing this a long time, the soap dough stuff a long time, and I can whip out some bunnies in a couple days, but it still takes me time. I have to actually focus. This I don't really have to think about very much, which isn't, there's just times that this, this is good to be in my rotation. We'll put it that way. This is so good to be in my rotation that I have all these, and this is only a fraction of what I have so far. So there's a pony, I have a goat, which I'm working on some more. This cat is like ridiculously cool in my opinion. Bats, custom bats, these are graphics I created for my book, by the way. Um, cat, another cat, which I love this sort of dimensional cat, right? That it looks like there's depth of field within the silhouette, that is fun. There's a monkey, oh, another goat. These witchy hats, cauldron and a spider. Um, this is a squirrel, a red squirrel though, not a typical squirrel. He's got those little fuzzy ears and a bunny and a standing dog, which I have a wolf, a unicorn, a scary pumpkin. We're getting to that. Another cat, rooster, donkey, beach scenes, 
cow. I mean, that's just some of what I've been up to. So anyway, um, I wanted you to see how I did this. And then, oh, here's the other thing too. So this is just soap. So when, you know, obviously I have, well, maybe not obviously, but I have toothbrushes that are dedicated to my soap tools because I can't get inside my extruder with my finger. So I have a toothbrush that goes in here. And I know it's a tiny brush, we'll put it that way. It sounds kind of gross when you call it a toothbrush and say I use it for other things, but I've never used any of those for anything else but for my tools. Anyway, take that brush and then put, run this under water and it comes right off and then it's reusable. That's the other point is that these are reusable. Now eventually they'll break down like, you know, the little details of, ooh, you don't want to put them together. And the little details will start to break down like this little bridge here on the tail if you keep mashing it this way. So that was the other issue too, is that when you put it on, you pull from the outside in and that helps a lot until you get all the soap dough and then you smooth it down. So um, yeah, so these just clean up with water which is to me, you know, ideal. And that's it. So they're going through, you know, some trial and error, some prototype and, but I want to be able to offer them to you because you can't find these anywhere and you could try. And if you do, I'm sure you're not going to find my collection because I made all these. Um, there just isn't anything for soap. And I want to offer the custom tools that we need for soap. So I can't necessarily make molds right now, which I've been trying to find mold makers for me in the United States. Shipping and whatnot is kind of a hassle. So um, I thought, well, I can't do the molds right now, which I can make molds for myself, but I can't make them available to you yet that I could do the stencils. And so there we are. This is why I'm doing the stencils. Another unique tool, a th something interesting to do. And I hope I've answered all your questions. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching and very much thank you for asking the questions that you've asked in the group so far. You guys have been awesome, seriously. And I really appreciate you a lot. Okay, thank you, bye.